Okay, she is an actress, producer, advocate, and like her wonderful mother and father, an outstanding human being who utilizes her numerous gifts and talents for the highest good of all concerned. She founded Films That Change the World to showcase movies that raise awareness about important social issues. She is following in the footsteps of her legendary producer-director father, who is known for taking artistic and financial chances by making landmark feature films that deal with controversial issues. In 2011, she premiered the powerful documentary Teach Your Children Well, which addressed the increasing challenge of bullying in schools. Previous selections in her screening series have included The Cove, which exposed the slaughter of dolphins in Japan, Elephants and Man, a Litany of Tragedy about the suffering of elephants in captivity, and Barbara Streisand's Yentl, which focused attention on women's equality and was used as a springboard to discuss the widespread sexual abuse of women in the Congo. She has starred in two popular one-woman shows, The Colors of Myself and Chris Crossy, and won awards for her roles as Helen Keller in The Miracle Worker and Anne Frank in The Diary of Anne Frank. She has also appeared in such films as Hollywood Dreams, Going Shopping, What Just Happened, and Little Fockers. As a musical performer, she is recording Gemstone, an album of Mick Jagger love songs, each as a duet with a different artist who has previously worked with Sir Mick. As a producer, okay, I'll for that. As a producer, she is developing a web series about the making of her album titled My Duet with Mick. She also has performed special tributes twice for the iconic Lily Tomlin and received a standing ovation with a special musical salute to her mentor, Lily, with the original parody, Dear Lily Tomlin. She most recently sang a heartfelt rendition of Bless the Beasts and Children and for, for Tomlin when she was honored with the Hope Award from the Petco Foundation. She's received the Compassion Award from the Braveheart Women and sold out her first workshop with Meet the Biz. She's performed a stand-up routine with a Hard Rock uh, Hollywood, with, with, at Hard Rock Hollywood, to benefit comedy for, for Caleb, and has been a presenter for LA Comedy Awards twice, a celebrity judge for the LA Music Awards, and was most recently named Entertainer of the Year by the LA Comedy Awards. She has also headlined an award show and galas for such luminaries as Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci, Shirley MacLaine, and is the godchild namesake of screen icon, the late Catherine Hepburn. I am so very honored to introduce Catherine Kramer. Well, geez, I'm sorry you just really haven't made that many accomplishments. <laughs> I was just listening to there's there's so many things recently that, that haven't even been added. Let's hear it. Say. Let's hear it. I just finished it. the, um, well, after I did Teach Your Children Well for my cinema series, Cat Kramer's Films That Change the World. And it sounds like it's a self-serving title, but that's the actual title of the series. Um, I had the fifth anniversary of a film called Fallout, which is a documentary about nuclear holocaust and the making of my father's film on the beach. And I also did one uh, right after that, the sixth anniversary about Heinrich Himmler, which is a documentary about Himmler. I'm very heavy, but socially conscious, um, not pro Himmler. This is all <laughs> <laughs> but from his words. I think it was a documentary that that a lot of it brought a lot of attention to um, the monster that he was. And and I just finished the seventh one back in April called Bo Paul: A Prayer for Rain. I don't know if many of you heard of that. Mm -hmm. It starred Martin Sheen and um, Misha Barton, and they were both hosting. And I also um, have established an award with the series called the Marsha Hunt for Humanity Award, which is in honor of the amazing Marsha Hunt. She's 95 years old and is the first real activist in our industry. I mean, back like, you know, in the 30s and 40s. She's actually has a, there's a new movie about her that's going to be closing the Burbank International Film Festival. Um, and she was blacklisted, but the award is really about her being a humanitarian, so that's established, and I'm going to be giving that to a worthy recipient uh, once a year, because I have three more in the series coming up. And I'm also um, proud to say I'm on Child of the 70s, which is a web series. I'm one of the stars of season three. You can check it out, it's on YouTube. Blip.tv, Funny or Die, um, I'm getting ready to shoot season four, 
and that's going to be on other platforms like uh, internationally, like nine different countries. Um, and that's all 70s icons making uh, cameos, and some of them are regular cast members. So Susan Olsen from The Brady Bunch, um, Bruce Valanche, uh, we've had Jerry Jewell, Donna Pescow, Judy Tenuta, Ted Lanch from The Love Boat. He, I cast both those two because I'm also an associate producer now on the show. Um, and I play multiple characters, kind of inspired by Lily Tomlin. And um, there's going to be a lot of surprises in season four. I can't really give those away. But it's a very funny, campy show. You should check it out because it's still building a following. And um, that's just some of the things I'm working on. Just some of them. <laughs> <laughs> And yet you have all this heart. So, I mean, tell I first of all, it from my mom I was going to say, dad. tell us about growing up, you know, in the Kramer household. I mean, what was that like? Well, most people think I grew up in Hollywood. I was born here, but as she was saying, Mom, uh, we moved to Seattle when I was very little and then New York. So I wasn't really raised in Hollywood. But I've been back long enough to now consider myself a native. I mean, when I first came back, I it took a while getting used to it again because it is very different than New York and Seattle. It just, you know, the culture is very different. And I, uh, Seattle is very progressive in theater and music. So I was like the child performer up there. I didn't even go to regular school. I went to professional school, and I was starring in all the plays um, and performing. So I've always been performing since I was like three years old. But I can't say that it's been easy breaking in. Even though I'm doing well, I'm still not where I want to be, and I found it to be um, pros and cons being the daughter of uh, famous parents and having Katherine Hepburn as a godmother. Everybody thinks everything was handed to me. I've had to work for everything. I'm very selective about what I do, and I can't say that it's been an easy road in that sense. So, you know. <laughs> but yet at the same time, like you have made these major decisions to use your public persona for the betterment of, you know, the community, the world community, the local. Where did that come from? Why did you make those decisions? It's a good question because I've always been socially conscious. Um, it's nothing that that anybody uh, drummed into me. I think it's just by osmosis um, and being raised by, because my dad was a really great dad. I mean, I have a younger sister too. He was always home for dinner at six. But remember, I was born way after he made most of his big movies, so I, I didn't even grow up on those sets. I came like at the tail end of that. I always wanted to be in the business. I mean, I guess in that sense, I could say Mickey Rooney's an inspiration because he was always in it. I mean, I was supposedly singing and dancing, and at like a very young age, I started doing that. I've always wanted to be a performer and an actress, and like the producing and all that kind of came later. Um, but when I started my cinema series, it kind of um, created itself, because it was after my father had passed away, it was in 2009, and we established the Stanley Kramer Theater at Sunset Gower Studios, which you mentioned earlier. That was Columbia, that was the home of Guess Who's Coming to Dinner and a lot of his big films. Yeah, and quite and many classic TV shows like The Witch yeah. and Andrew Mitchell. And um, I... Uh, I just came up with an idea to, first it was called Phil, Cat Kramer's Films That Changed the World. I wanted to screen not his films necessarily, but more modern films that followed in his footsteps, filmmakers that had a voice, um, movies that were socially conscious that needed to be re, almost like re-released in a sense or rediscovered. So Yentl was my first one because my father and I just loved and used to watch that. and. Um, I just, it was such a great woman's quality story, and um, it's a very serious movie, even though it's a musical. And so that's, I started with that, and I tied that up with the organizations um, about the women in the Congo, which people were blown away because they wouldn't associate those two things. But in Yentl's case, she was, um, you know, not allowed to study because she was a girl. And in the Congo, if you're a female, you're raped and murdered, and, and it just showed that we haven't even come that far in different countries. So the whole thing took off. I only had it for a night. It was all for women. It was Women's History Month. I had 90 <coughs> women, because the theater, the Stanley Kramer Theater at that time only had like 91 seats. So 91, I think we had more than that, but you know, it was a very small group, star-studded. Um, and Barbara at that time, she wanted Marilyn Bergman 
to speak on behalf of the film because she felt the music was such a big part of it, which is it, which it is. So, for my very first one, we had Marilyn Bergman as the keynote speaker. Um, it was a lot of celebrity support, activists, and for the media, invitation only, and it kind of took off after that. I mean, just there was a demand for this. So the next one was The Code, and that put the screening series through the roof because the film was nominated for an Academy Award, but the Academy voters at that time were very frightened to see the film. It was like the Academy's a different animal than all the other guilds, and there's so much dolphin slaughter, it's only like three minutes, but it's very, very, it's just hard to watch. They were afraid to see it. So I invited all the voting members that I could. It was like right before the ballots were due. But I also had the filmmakers, they flew in for it. Again, star-studded, I, I combined red carpet premieres with think tank panels. So you get this kind of like intimate panel, but you also have the red carpet premiere with the um, media and the celebrities. There's nothing else really like that, and I don't charge admission. Invitation only, almost a return to like salons, but bigger than that. So the Cove really, when it, they won the Academy Award, they took me with them. We celebrated the Vanity Fair party, and then they shut down the Hump Restaurant in Santa Monica a week later. They'd actually use the screening, the filmmakers of the Cove, as like a sting operation. We did the event, and then they went to the Hump Restaurant because it was serving whale meat, and they ended up, you know, exposing that. And so I think now I'm a real actor. <laughs> And then I did the Elephants and Man. This is for this is because I'm a big elephant advocate, and that was really the first thing I did with Lily Tomlin. I mean, she is important to me as a performer, but it was her activism that we first bonded on. And she's a big elephant advocate, and we presented this film that shows the cruelty to elephants in the zoos and circuses. And I was so lucky to have Cher come. She was also one of the hosts. Tippi Hedren. I mean, this was we got international coverage. So I saw, this is my third one, this is obviously something that I meant to continue doing, and I felt that my father was watching over me and still is on each one that I do. They're all thematic. I get the right celebrity host. The films that I use as the tool to expose the issues are like the right films of the moment. I mean, there could be five movies on or ten movies on one subject, but I managed to you know, find that film that's going to expose these issues the most, just like my dad did only it's through new filmmakers and mostly documentaries. I've been primarily... Which are becoming more popular yeah, than ever. Because they really expose the issues. And then Elephants and Men was the third one, Teach Your Children Well. I actually did that twice. Lily Tomlin narrates that. It's about bullying in the schools. And I'm an anti-bullying activist because I've been bullied. And so bullying, yeah, bu and so many people, you know, adults are bullied in the workplace. So that's like a huge issue I'm trying to really um, advocate for, and um, I then became a motivational speaker just because of that film. I mean, it just. So when do you sleep? That's the question. <laughs> no, because I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm doing my one woman show. Also, you, I, my duet with Mick is also a one woman show besides an album and a web series. So it's like a three part thing, and I have to say how that. Do you, how do you divide it all? How, how, how I, do I, I don't know because I'm doing, I've taken on a lot of things just to try and finish everything this year, the series. There's two film projects and I've got like three more, four more maybe, but three set for the cinema series. Because I, you know, it's just, and each one is like a full, t you know, full-time production. Um, plus I'm like campaigning for Lily Tomlin's film Grandma. I'm trying to get her recognized for that and hopefully honor it with, we have like four Stanley Kramer Awards besides the Producers Guild. And this film is, it's about abortion, it's about feminism, but it isn't in your face. So like in the sense, like Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, which the director of Grandma, Paul Weitz, I actually worked with him, he directed Little Fockers. And his grandfather was my dad's agent. So it's between that and Lily, it's like this is a passion film and when you see it, you know, you'll realize that the abortion issue, teen abortion, is not, just like in Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, it's really a relationship film, but the issue is worked throughout. So it is very much in the Stanley Kramer mold. Made for only $600,000, you know, very wow. independent film. And 19 Ma days. Made in 19 days, and it opens tomorrow at the Arclight. Hey, wow. And the Landmark. Only opens in LA and New York. 
finally expands. And please check it out, especially at the Arclight this weekend, because the Cinerama Dome, which Mom forgot to mention, my father had built for It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. Mickey Rooney's last appearance for Mad World um, for the recent anniversary was at the Cinerama Dome, and this is right next door. So, you know, it's Arclight is still connected to the Cinerama Dome, and it still has that history to it. Well, gosh, thank you for all the, the great talent you bring to the world and all the wonderful things that you do for the artistic. It was very special, and I mean, that was very encouraging. And I have to say, I used to do like a Judy Garland um, tribute in my one, my first one woman show, and he wanted me to do a Broadway musical called Mick and Judy, which or Mickey and Judy, excuse me, but he was also <laughs> called Mick. So you know, we have Mick Jagger, we have sure. Mickey Rooney. Um, that never happened, but I mean, I'm still, you know, I think it would be a great idea. Well, somebody because he was very close to her. Mm -hmm. so. Somebody could certainly play him. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. And your hair is so beautiful. Let's yes. let's give a hand for that hair. <laughs> I'm telling you it all. <laughs> you always look gorgeous. You and your mother always look so perfect. So I, I just, you know, I don't know what else to say. I'm so overwhelmed, really, with with the heart and soul that I see, um, and that it's not just about Hollywood with you. It's not just about. It's never about Hollywood with your husband and your father. And it's uh, you guys who are just carrying the legacy on so beautifully. And we're all so blessed to have you. So. A nice big hand, please. Thank you.